I'm from the clean tech and e-mobility industry. For, uh, I've been there for about 12 years. Um, so uh, as HG mentioned, I'm managing a few things, one of which is an EV charging management platform that we're launching here in January. So really excited about that. If you don't mind, I will take a minute and do a bit of a public service addressment for ITRON, uh, just since many people haven't heard of ITRON. We're actually uh, uh, a very critical company operating at the, uh, at the grid edge and managing a ton of infrastructure out there. So we have about 80 million endpoints under management that we, uh, that we have networked and are, and are operating. Most of us, uh, most of the industry knows us as an as a advanced metering infrastructure company. But we actually also uh, operate devices and networks at the, on the grid side of things, as well as uh, behind the meters, so uh, distributed energy resources. And so, um, and so we're really excited about the, uh, not only the network that we manage, because we think this issue that uh, we're moving towards is, has to be at the scale of millions and millions of endpoints. When you think about managing solar storage, transportation assets, that's a millions and millions of endpoints problem. So we want to be ready for that scale. Um, and we're thinking about it from a, a smart city perspective. We're thinking about it from a, a distributed energy management perspective, solar storage, as well as from an a, electric vehicle perspective. Not to mention water, too. So water's down there as well. Uh, we manage water assets as well. OK, so root problems for this topic. So the topic has to do with real-time emission and pricing signals. So I think nobody would argue that we're all for moving towards clean, clean energy, clean electri electrification transportation. But people don't act until it really hits the pocketbook, right? So we need the right price signals to drive the right behavior. So that's what I'm going to be talking about today. And it has to do with price signals around emissions as well as what's happening on the grid side of things. So one of the root problems is how utility rate structures have been developed in the past. And so uh, there's time of use rates, there's demand charges that have been put together, but these are all based off of forecasts. They're based off of forecasts of generation and then forecasts of infrastructure that's going to be put in the ground uh, to, to meet peak demand, as well as uh, general operations and maintenance of, of grid assets. So, uh, and these rate, case, these rate cases happen every three years. So not real time. And if you've ever done carbon emissions calculations within a, within a company or within the public sector uh, and have experience with that, it's all based off of uh, EPA numbers that are typically developed every year, every three years. Um, and that's also on a, a backward looking basis. And so, uh, and so any, any energy consumer that consumes the same amount of energy is gonna look the same. I could be consuming 10 kilowatt hours at a certain time of day uh, uh, at a, when, when we're generating clean energy. HG could be gener uh, consuming 10 kilo kilowatt hours of energy at a time when we're consuming dirty energy, and we could look the same. So it's not necessarily an accurate way uh, to look at carbon emissions. Uh, the third root problem is EVs. Um, they can have a massively positive impact on, on emissions. We all understand that. Uh, but that's only if the generation, the fuel we're using to power EV, EVs comes from clean energy. If we just transition from drilling for oil and refining uh, into gasoline to generating uh, energy through, through coal or other dirty sources, we're not solving the problem. Last one is in some parts of, uh, in some parts of the country, we're actually curtailing clean energy. So we're actually wasting clean energy that's being, uh, that, that's being generated. And so... It doesn't happen everywhere, but it happens in, in, in California, uh, other places. And that's really a market failure. That's kind of a crime almost that, uh, that we, would be, we would be wasting that. So uh, the more we can put that into uh, vehicle batteries or stationary storage to be used um, efficiently, the better. So these are the root problems we're trying to solve. So key obstacles to overcome. So utilities really need to understand real-time energy delivery cost and also emissions factor. So I know, Carrie, I believe you mentioned the, uh, the Illinois Act that was passed. It does mention real-time pricing in there. I haven't combed through all 960 pages, but uh, this is kind of a click lower to really understand uh, delivery cost as well as emissions factors on the generation side. 
And then these factors need to be signaled to end customers uh, in order to reflect an energy or power price that drives the right behavior. So if we can signal prices in the right way, people will act, both individual consumers as well as fleets. And then we need to have smart devices, smart EV chargers that can do intelligent things. So we need to develop the software that can react to a price signal and, and uh, plan a charging schedule accordingly. So that's knowing when and where the, the generation is cleanest, uh, and then uh, charging EVs with the cleanest energy possible. Uh, and then also this can be uh, on the grid side of things. So this isn't just emissions, this can be real-time energy price signals coming from the grid, uh, so we know when the grid is congested uh, and, and EVs can, uh, EV charging can, can react accordingly. So just a quick example um, to show you what I'm talking about here. And so uh, the blocks here, this is from Carbonara, so I stole this from a partner of ours called Carbonara. And so the blocks here represent time of use uh, rate blocks. And so if you're familiar with that, that's just different pricing during, uh, for energy during different parts of the day. So the red block is, is the peak uh, when it's most expensive, when energy is most expensive. The yellow block is the shoulders. Next most expensive, and the green block is when, when energy is cheapest. And then the line is uh, emissions, emissions during the day. And so let's take a, a school bus depot. Everybody's familiar with school buses and their kind of transit patterns. So uh, a, a school bus will do its route in the afternoon, come back and, and plug in in the afternoon, let's say 4 p.m. Uh, and so if, if there's no smart charging, they'll charge at the dirtiest time of day uh, from the dirtiest energy as well as the most expensive time of day. Now there could be some simplistic smart charging software that says you don't need to do that, you're sitting around for 14 hours, let's shift your, your charging schedule out. Uh, and that charging schedule will probably be shifted out to, to midnight, start at midnight when energy starts getting cheap. But still, the energy, uh, the energy being produced at that, uh, at that point is still dirty. So if there was an emission signal and that was built into a price signal, that charging would shift out to later uh, in the middle of the night, probably starting at 3, 4 a.m., uh, and then making sure those vehicles are charged uh, in the morning when they need to meet their route. So if you think about a fleet such as a bus, bus depot, their main constraint is the vehicles need to be charged to the, the right state of charge so they don't get stranded. We don't want our kids stranded. The second is managing your utility bill, managing the cost of it. And the third in this case would be hopefully managing uh, the emissions factor. If you can pull that emissions factor into the actual price signal, then your smart software only has to solve for two things. So consequences of addressing or not addressing. And so the first one is if this would really, by, by building emissions uh, price signals into real-time pricing, it would really accelerate the net zero plans from utilities, uh, net zero emission plans. So a lot of utilities have, have put these plans out there some know how they're going to uh, reach these, uh, these goals. A lot actually don't if you, if you dive into it. So I think by doing this, this would set the right behavior such that these goals would be attainable and faster. Uh, it provides accurate signals to fleet customers to help them make the proper decisions. So again, people react to pricing. So uh, this is a way to, 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 to provide those right signals to, to end fleet customer, end fleet customers. It also drives 24 by 7 renewable uh, matching. So uh, if you think about, um, RECs are another kind of backward looking type of top down calculation where it's not necessarily done in real time. So if you can tie, if you can tie real time generation of clean energy to real time consumption, you can actually match those efficiently. And that's actually what this invisible, invisible uh, gap is. This is a Rocky Mountain Institute uh, uh, graph where it shows uh, there's actually an inefficiency in, in the way um, uh, emissions are calculated between real-time matching versus the annual matching, and the inefficiency is about 20%. So we can get 20% more efficiency by having the right emissions price signals. And then the last one, it leads to smarter and more cost-effective EV charging for fleets. And so, uh, again, this can't be cost prohibitive um, to fleets. It has to be cost advantageous. So bottom line is there needs to be real-time price signals, but it has to drive efficiency uh, and total cost of ownership advantages. And then importantly, from an equity perspective, which we're, we're also focused on, 
uh, real-time real -time price signals can also drive uh, equity as well. And if you just take the air quality advantage, so uh, a lot of low-income low uh, communities are, are disproportionately uh, disadvantaged by, by air quality, again, this drives cleaner, cleaner air, more efficient uh, adoption of, uh, and meeting of clean, clean air uh, goals. So final statement. So regarding mobility and transportation to achieve Chicago's carbon and equity goals, a critical obstacle to overcome is enabling an energy price structure that accounts for real-time emission signals and grid congestion that can be utilized for smart EV charging. And it's always important to have a, a pilot in mind or a use case in mind. So uh, ideally, we could start with a, a, a public or private fleet, such as uh, the Chicago Transit Authority, as with the Chicago Transit Authority. Uh, thank you for your time and consideration.